Believe me, Lang. The first 24 hours of the invasion would be decisive. The fate of Germany depends on the outcome. For the Allies as well as Germany, it will be the longest day. <laughs> and from Portland, from Plymouth, from Weymouth, from a dozen different ports, tense men and taut ships sailed for Normandy. Operation Overlord, the invasion of Europe, the greatest amphibious assault in all history. Shortly after midnight on June 6, 1944, the Allies launched the invasion of Hitler's fortress, Europe. What awaited Americans, British, Canadians, French, Russians, and Germans on the beaches of Normandy unfolded into one of the greatest stories of the war. Even as the Allies struggled to establish their toehold on the continent, a young war correspondent was experiencing the desperation of D-Day and filing dispatches. What he saw on those beachheads stayed with him long after the war in Europe was over. And his account of the tense, tragic, and triumphant minutes and hours on the 6th of June became a smash bestseller and box office sensation. It became The Longest Day. Far from the sands of Normandy, in the rolling hills of southeastern Ohio, the Cornelius Ryan Memorial Collection of World War II papers resides at Ohio University. <laughs> Located in the Alden Library on the Athens campus, the research and writings of this gifted historian and author include materials from not only Ryan's The Longest Day, but other significant works of Bridge Too Far and The Last Battle. Through the efforts of a longtime friend, the Ohio University Foundation and the Cornelius Ryan Trust, this priceless collection containing original manuscripts, correspondence, photographs, and other documents offers a tremendous resource to both the serious scholar and others as well. Ohio University acquired the collection in 1981 mainly through the longtime friendship of John Wilhelm, who at that time was Dean of the College of Communication and Cornelius Ryan. Wilhelm and Ryan served together as war correspondents during World War II and from about 1944 to 1945, we're both attached to George Patton's Third Army, and Ryan and Wilhelm were billet mates. Then after the war, Ryan and Wilhelm stayed in contact with each other, including membership in the Overseas Press Club and other functions and so forth. So that by the time uh, Ryan died in 1974, while other institutions had shown great interest in acquiring the collection, we really had a leg up. So by 1981, the, the collection did arrive here. Ryan compiled gripping accounts of not only the Normandy invasion, but the ill-fated airborne operation into Holland that became another bestseller, A Bridge Too Far. In each instance, Ryan used a journalist's painstaking attention to detail and combined it with a feature writer's sense of drama to uncover and capture some of the most intriguing and fascinating stories to come out of the Second World War. Ryan is taking um, sort of a new direction here. He is combining what the standard historian would write, relying upon secondary sources, books that had already been written about the topic and documents, and doing what a journalist would do, and that is through the interviews of people or through correspondence with people, giving it that realness. Uh, Ryan was very, very interested in trying, not only with these books, but with his prior writing, to give you the feel of, you are there. For Ryan, this meant placing advertisements, sending questionnaires, and conducting interviews, collecting information that became an enthralling minute-by-minute -minute recreation of events. 
The contents of the collection reflect Ryan's unique methods for gathering information. Some 12,000 research files are present, of which at least 7,000 contain transcribed interviews and correspondence with individual participants. In addition, the collection contains extensive photograph files, nearly 100 maps and copies of Ryan's original manuscripts in various stages of revision. It is a one-of-a-kind resource that carries the study of history beyond times, dates, and statistics. Ryan, through his method, collected thousands of stories from individual people who participated in these battles. Uh, be they privates, generals, anything in between, male and female, from all nationalities involved in the, in the war or in these particular battles. What's unique about that is that we have now materials here in this collection that exist nowhere else. The collection is still alive. There are many things that have not been used by anyone waiting for someone to come dig them out and find them and put them to their own use. The Ryan Room at Ohio University's Alden Library is more than a depository for documents. It is a window to the mind of an author who captured the triumph and tragedy of war through innovative techniques that brought the common soldier, the civilian, and the general to center stage. No one, I, I would imagine, would want to base everything that they're writing on just the Ryan Collection, but what the Ryan Collection can do for people today is what Ryan used it for uh, in the past, and that is providing the spice, the, the excitement, the drama that can be added to any research project, be it uh, very simple or very involved. The Cornelius Ryan Memorial Collection of World War II Papers at Ohio University. If you'd like further information on the Cornelius Ryan Memorial Collection of World War II Papers, please contact us at Ohio University.